Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good to have everybody on this morning. This terrific Tuesday, March the 16th. Did you pick up some nuggets today in the reading? If you did, uh, share them with us on the screen. Uh, put it in the chat and let us know what it is that you got. If you're on YouTube, um, type in a little quick message about what nugget you got for today. Again, just really encouraging you that as you read, um, it's important that we read the historical text. We, we need to know what happened, when it happened, these stories are important to us, um, but it's also important that we read for the encouragement for today. And Lord knows we need encouragement today, huh? <laughs> um, see several of you joining. Love when you put your messages in. Good morning, Joy Sue. And there's Debbie and um, D. Hi, D. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Bandy. Good to see you. There's my friend, Judy. Hi, Karen. Eileen's giving us morning hugs. Good morning, Sherry. Hi, Laurie. Good morning. Good morning. Bet you're sitting back enjoying seeing um, Colorado covered up with snow instead of you, huh, Laurie? <laughs> <laughs> Carrie and Corey's getting it. <laughs> Hi, Karen. <laughs> There's Cindy. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, everybody. We are reading in the book of Numbers. And just right off the bat, um, I got a blessing from this morning's reading. Just right off the bat. <clears throat> um, Numbers 24, verses 1. And we're going to go through chapter 25, verse 18. <coughs> But I want to read right here at the very, very beginning for a little bit. Uh, by now, Balaam realized that the Lord was determined to bless Israel. So he did not resort to divination as before. Instead, he turned and looked out toward the wilderness where he saw the people of Israel camped tribe by tribe. Then the Spirit of God came upon him, and this is the message he delivered. My, oh my, what happens when we turn to God? What happens when we turn to God? Have, have you ever had a situation where you just struggled and you struggled and you didn't know why you were struggling? I mean, something was just hard. You just didn't quite get it. You just, you couldn't quite figure it out. You couldn't quite fix it. You couldn't quite... And you finally reach that place where you just kind of set back and you just, it's like you just drop all your, all your offenses, all your, by offenses, I mean being on the offensive, uh, you know, all of your initiative, all your, well, I tried this. Well, maybe if I try that, well, maybe if I do this and then, and then you just set back and you just, you just, it's just like you just plop down in the chair and it's like, <sighs> I don't even know what to do. And then your thoughts turn to God. And then all of a sudden, just that word suddenly, and suddenly you realize God's got this. You realize what it is you're supposed to do or not do, or you realize you're supposed to release it or the answer comes. The answer comes. Has that ever happened to you? Boy, it's happened to me. And and then you just wonder, why in the world did I try to take that on? Why, why didn't I let God just do this from the beginning? I feel like that's kind of the way Balaam was, that it's like he was going along with a crowd. He was being pressured. And, you know, the world will pressure us. I mean, in his situation... There was a physical presence that was pushing him. Um, you know, Balak, King Balak. He, I could have killed him at any time. I mean, the pressure was real. Um, and Balaam gave in to it. But when he sat back and he looked out over God's people, and then when the Spirit of God came upon him, then, then what about, then what about, then what about what he said? I, I mean... He repeats it. 
he repeats it. And it's the third time that he ends up blessing God's people. But I want to read what he, what he said. Um, got one other thing I'm wanting to make sure I don't miss today. <coughs> this is the message of Balaam, son of Boyd. The, me the message of the man whose eyes see clearly, whose eyes see clear. In that moment when we just, we just sit back and we just let it all, the stress of, of whatever it was we're dealing with, just leave us. And, and we allow God to finally reveal to us what he's been wanting to reveal to us all along then our eyes see clearly. The message of the man whose eyes see clearly. The message of one who hears the words of God. I, I, I know that feeling of, oh, Lord, I know you were speaking that to me all along. Why did I just now get it? Who sees a vision from, from the Almighty. Oh, now he's gonna stretch us a little bit. When's the last time you've seen a vision? I just, I just, that's live on YouTube, by the way, <laughs> that I'm shaking you. <laughs> When's the last time that you've seen a vision from the Almighty? Do you know that probably everybody that's listening to me right now, I say everybody, there's an awful lot of you. There's more of you than not that doesn't believe that God will give you a vision. And guess what? As long as you maintain that attitude, you won't see the visions he's given you. Because, see, I believe he's given us visions. I think Donna had a vision yesterday. She texted me and said, tell Tom, <laughs> because she had a vision. If you don't believe that God will give you a vision, then you're not going to be open to see his vision. So... Once again, I repeat it because it's important, and I repeat it because I want, I want everybody at the sound of my voice to get what God's saying to us through these words. The message of the man whose eyes see clearly, the message of the one who hears the words of God, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who bows down with eyes wide open. In that moment when we set back and we release it all, and we just submit. It's just, Lord, I don't even know what to do anymore. I, I'm all out of options. Then all of a sudden it becomes the message of Elizabeth whose eye sees clearly. The message of Elizabeth who hears the word of God. Elizabeth who sees a vision from the Almighty. And Elizabeth who bows down with eyes wide open. Make this about you. Make this about you. The message of Judy, whose eyes see clearly. Of Lynn, the message of Lynn, who hears the words of God. The message of Anne, Anne who sees a vision from the Almighty. Of Bandy, who bows down with eyes wide open. I mean, if we just had eyes wide open to see what God wants us to see, or to see the way God sees. The way God sees. Wow. Wow. I don't know about you, but right now on March the 16th of 2021, that ministers to me. That really encourages me as I'm attempting to do what I so hope is God's heart every single day. Every single day, Lord, do I do this? Lord, as this door opens and this <coughs> door open and this door opens and this door opens, which one of them is a distraction? Which one of them is not your best? Lord, I want to walk through the door that is your best. Now, for some of us, this may be a temptation. This door may be a temptation. This door may be unforgiveness. This door may be the blessings that God has for us. This door may be just a distraction to keep our eyes off. 
I mean, do you understand that that Balaam got distracted by words? A king came and wooed him and said, "Come, go with me." I mean, what was what was the temptation in that? I, I'm not sure the Bible makes it very plain. Was Balak, King Balak, going to give him all kinds of riches? Was it just for the sake of pleasing people? I know this morning the Lord and I had a little talk about my tendency to want to please people. And, you know, I, I, I can't begin to tell you guys how blessed I am when I get your messages. When I get your messages, um that encouraged me, that thanked me for doing the Bible study or, or better yet, I mean, some of the most encouraging things I get from you is when you tell me, um, I shared the Bible study and they're going to watch. So-and-so is going to be on with us. Um, or even better yet, I, I purchased a one-year Bible and I gave it to this person. Oh, I mean to tell you, I can't begin to tell you <laughs> what that does to my heart. But it's like the Lord was asking me this morning, if I'm ready, what if, the what if, what if somebody doesn't agree with what I say? What if somebody doesn't like it that I'm doing this? What if, hmm, I got to keep my eyes on God. I mean, if you're doing, if you're doing what God wants you to do, there's going to be somebody that's going to come against you. Somebody's not going to like it. Uh, the, how do I know that? How do I know that? Because it's written. Count it great joy when persecution comes. Because it builds your endurance. Count it great joy when trials and tribulations come. Are we at that place yet that we can count it great joy? When it comes, are we thanking him in the middle of our trial? Are we praising him in the middle of our storm? <laughs> are we praising him when things don't look what we think it's supposed to look like? Well, I married this man and I thought he was going to be the greatest thing since sliced cake. And turns out that he leaves his socks laying all over the place and he... His breath smells bad when he wakes up in the morning, and he's grumpy. We call those things and are not as though they were. We call those things that are not as though they were. Lord, I thank you that I married the tidiest man on the earth. I thank you, Lord, that he has perfect hygiene. I thank you, Lord, that he is the spiritual head over my family. I thank you that he prays for us. Uh, Call those things that are not as though they are. What, what situation is in your life right now that isn't the way you thought that God would answer your prayers, that it doesn't line up with God's word? Well, I thought my son was called. I thought my son would follow God. I thought my daughter would teach Sunday school. I thought my daughter would call those things that are not as though they were. My children rise up and call me blessed. Find the words in the Bible. Make this about them. I thought my daughter would be the, the one that brings the message whose eyes see clearly. I thought my daughter would, I, I call my daughter to be the one who hears the words of the Lord. I call my neighbor to be the one who sees a vision from the Almighty. I call these things over you. If you're listening to me today, I call these things over you, that you will be the, the one whose eyes see clearly, that you will be the one who hears the words of the Lord, that you will see visions from the Almighty. I declare that if you're listening to my voice right now, that you will be the one to see visions from the Almighty and that you'll bow down with your eyes wide open for him. Call those things that are not as though they were. <clears throat> he goes on to say, How beautiful are your tents, O Jacob. How lovely are your homes, O Israel. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, he sees things differently. He's, he's seeing things that just in the, in the times before wasn't in his vision. And now he's seeing how beautiful 
their tents are and their homes. They spread before me like palm uh, groves, like gardens by the riverside. They're, they are like tall trees planted by the Lord, like cedars beside the waters. I mean, these people were the same as they were before in the physical. But, but now he's seeing things spiritually. Are you seeing your loved ones spiritually or are you seeing them by the deeds that they're doing? Or are you seeing them by the words they're saying? Or are you seeing them from the world standards? We see a lot of the things in our life by the world standards, by the culture in which we're raised in, instead of seeing them the way God wants us to see them. <clears throat> Water will flow from their buckets. Their offspring have all they need. Well, I'm telling you what, these are words we ought to be speaking over the people that we love. We ought to be speaking these words over ourselves. Their king will be greater than Agag. Their kingdom will be exalted. God brought them out of Egypt. For, for them, he is as strong as a wild ox. He devours all the nations that oppose him, breaking their bones in pieces, shooting them with arrows like a lion. Israel crouches and lies down like a lioness who dares to arouse her. Blessed is everyone who blesses you, O Israel, and cursed is everyone who curses you. There's a message in that when you have a child at school that's being bullied, when, when somebody's picking on somebody, when the enemy seems to be crouching at the door, ready to pounce. All kinds of little tidbits in here today. Look what happens when we turn to the Lord. Hmm. Hmm. I could keep going. Um, goes on in verse 15. This is the message Balaam delivered. This is the message of Balaam, son of Beor. The message of the man whose eyes see clearly. The message of one who hears the words of the Lord who has knowledge from the Most High, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who bows down with eyes wide open. What if every time we spoke, we spoke of ourself the way Balaam spoke of himself here? I am the one who sees clearly. I am the one who bows down with eyes wide open. I am the one that hears the words of God. I am the one who has visions from the Almighty. Mm. Think it would change our attitude any? Do you think it would open up the airways just a little bit, actually open up our spiritual ears so we would hear a little bit better? Um, good stuff. I want to keep going. Luke is just... Mm. Yeah, I'm skipping over some stuff, but I have to because I don't have enough time. <laughs> Y'all have things you got to do today for the Lord. <laughs> Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 35. Mm, just <laughs> so good, so good. Just Jesus being born, the shepherds coming, the word suddenly, suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of Lord's glory, of the Lord's glory surrounded them suddenly, suddenly. I love that word, suddenly. Have you had any suddenlies in your life? Suddenly, the angel is joined by a vast host. That's verse 13. Suddenly, the angel is joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Do you have peace today? Is that your peace? Is God pleased with you today? Now, praise God, we're not living under the, the law. But that's a good thing for us to ask ourselves. And then verse 19. So all of this is happening. She knows that the Son of God was born, that she's the mother of Jesus. She knows that because the angel has told her. God has spoken it to her. All the shepherds come, the angels sing. All these things happen in verse 19. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. And thought about them often. Have you thought about the responsibility 
that Mary had as the mother of Jesus Christ? How did she do it? I mean, how did she do it? How did she watch them murmur and complain about him? How did she watch them whisper things about her son? How did she watch them build up to a frenzy to where they called for Barabbas to be released and not Jesus? How did she do that? I think we got a big hint right here. Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. When you read every day, are you just reading to check off March 16th, 2021? Oh, I'm done. I am now on day 75. I just finished day 75 in my quest to read all the way through the Bible. Or are you hiding these things in your heart? Hide these things in my heart. Oh Lord, hide these things in my heart so that I might not sin against thee. So that I might be able to endure what's ahead of me. What, what ended up being the greatest blessing any woman on earth has ever experienced to be chosen by God to birth baby Jesus turned out to be she's knelt at his feet while he's hung on a cross watching them put vinegar in his mouth, watching them put that crown of thorns on his head, watching them taking that sword and piercing him. Do you think God prepared her for that moment in time? Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. How often did she have to think about them to be prepared for that moment in time? If they marched in here today, and they marched my kids and my grandkids in here. And these people at this table that I love with every breath I take. And they pointed the gun at their head. And demand, demand that I denounce him. Would it be in my heart of hearts to know. That the heaven that waited for them is better than anything they could experience on earth. I mean, we mourn and grieve when somebody passes away to the point that we sometimes have to fight against depression. We have to fight against the darkness that wants to overtake us because we're mourning and grieving someone who's in heaven, who is seeing all of that glory, those angels. The Bible says the angels sing when a saint goes home. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and singing. And yet we, we want to hang on because it hurts us. We want to hang on. They come out at night, Psalms 59 says. We're reading 59 verse 1 through 17. They come out at night. What comes out at night? Well, what comes out at night when you can't sleep? They come out at night snarling like vicious dogs as they prowl the streets. You ever had a bad dream that kept you up at night? That's verse 6. They come out at night. Listen to the filth that comes from their mouths. Their words cut like swords. I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life that my thoughts when I lay down at night looks just like what we read today. I mean, why is it they attack at night? Why is it those thoughts come at night when everything's quiet, when everybody else in the house is sleeping and you resent the fact that they can sleep and you don't? Those thoughts start. Then again, verse 14, my enemies come out at night snarling like vicious dogs as they prowl the streets. They scavenge for food but go to sleep unsatisfied. Even when you sleep, you're unsatisfied. It's not a restful sleep because you're tormented. These thoughts come out at night. Hmm. But, what, but what about God? What, what if, what if in that time in the middle of the night when we can't sleep, what if we did what Balaam did? And he turned and he looked out toward where he saw the people, God's people, 
Then the Spirit of God come upon him. See, in that moment, what I believe he did is he turned his face back towards God. What if in the middle of the night we turn our face back towards God and we realize that, like verse 8 says, but Lord, you laugh at them. You scoff at all the hostile things going on in my brain. God's laughing. When you're laying there being tormented, God's laughing at them. He's not scared of those things that come out at night. He's not scared of your thoughts. God is my strength. I wait for him to rescue me. For you, O oh God, are my fortress. What if, if you have trouble sleeping at night, you take these words and you write them down on a little three by five card and you put them on your nightstand. And in the middle of the night when these thoughts start attacking you and you can't slow your mind down, you start reading the words that, God, you laugh at them. You scoff at my enemies. You are my strength. I wait for you to rescue me. For you, O oh God, are my fortress. In you, in your unfailing love, my God will stand with me. He will look down and triumph over all my enemies. O oh Lord, our shield, my shield. Verse 16, but as for me, I will sing about your power. What if you just broke out in song? What if you just started praising him in the middle of what you're going through? Each morning I will sing with joy about your unfailing love. Is that what you do every morning? Or do you get up thinking about what you were sleeping, uh, uh, dreaming about in the middle of the night or those thoughts that came? I will, each morning I will sing with joy about your unfailing love for you've been my refuge, a place of safety when I am in distress. Oh man, so many good things today. So many good things to help me on this Tuesday, March the 16th. Proverbs eleven fourteen. Without wise leadership, a nation falls. There is safety in having many advisors. Many advisors. Who is the core group that God's given you? And I'm not talking about those that come in and tell you that you ought to divorce your husband or your wife. I'm not talking about those that come in and just feel sorry for you because you're going through a hard time. Oh, poor pitiful you. Oh, I'm so sorry. Life is so hard right now. Those are not the people you need to surround yourself with. You need to surround yourself with those that says that, um, you know, no weapon formed against you will prosper. This may be tough, but my God specializes in the tough. God is the, his greatest when, when you are you're at your weakest. Focus on God. Stop focusing on your situation. Stop focusing on how bad it is and start focusing on how great God is. Start getting up in the morning and singing about God's power. Praise him. Put on your praise and worship music. Start focusing on how God is your refuge. That in the time of trouble that you're having, that God is what it's all about. It's not about you and your trouble. It's not about you and what you're going through right now. It's not about getting people to feel sorry for you. It's about letting your light so shine so that, that, that your Father in heaven will be glorified right in the middle of your stuff. <laughs> Stop feeling sorry for yourself, Elizabeth. Rise and shine on this beautiful, terrific Tuesday. I love you guys.